What's up, what's up? I'm Renz Davis, and this is... Friends Friends from Friends Friends by May Life. And we are and here we with are... a special guest, you know, I'm fanboying myself, Jeff Chan <laughs> from MMA Shredded. What's up, Jeff? What's up, guys? Thanks for having me. Pleasure to have you here, buddy. First of all, so, how's your day going so far, my man? <laughs> uh, it's doing good. Uh, 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, about to, you know, after this call, I'm going to have lunch, and then I'm going to head to the gym. Oh, actually, the gyms uh, just started opening uh, since Monday. So, oh, that's yeah. nice. Yeah, <laughs> that's nice. The gyms that's also opened up news, since uh, Wednesday here in the Netherlands again. We were okay, allowed nice. to train again. Awesome. I mean, of course, there's a bunch of limitations, but uh, still better than yeah, nothing. Yeah, of course. But you know, we gotta keep uh, it safe. If we, if we, you know, follow the rules, hopefully we can keep it open. Yeah. <laughs> But, you know, I wanted to ask you, how does a typical day of a professional MMA fighter like yourself look? Um, I mean, it really depends whether I'm in fight camp or not. But right now, because I'm not in fight camp, uh, I'm obviously not training as hard, but I'm still training just as often. I don't see myself as a fighter, per se. I see myself more as a martial artist. And when I'm not in fight camp, I'm constantly thinking of ideas to create content because that's like what I do for a living. So when I'm at the gym, I'm not just always training hard, but I'm always, you know, I always got a notebook when I head to the gym and I have a whole list of what I'm going to do and film. I essentially film every sparring session I have. And um, I'm always just creating content every day. So That's um, amazing. Yeah. I also want to show, uh, but that, that's another question. How do you get, you know, how do you do it, you know, when you uh, explain certain techniques like how to fight like Conor McGregor or how to fight like uh, Wonder Boy? We all, always see you, you know, in, in the videos that you uh, are also able to do these techniques. You know, you, you aren't o only able to explain them, but you also are able to uh, perform them in sparring. So you just film every single sparring match and you just try this technique over and over again until you can land it? So I have two different ways of creating content. The f how it all started was, um, you know, I would watch a fighter and I would, uh, you know, I fall, fall in love with their, their movements. For example, a lot of people think I have a karate background, but I actually have a Muay Thai background. I've never done karate before. But people called think it. That, he called yeah. it. <laughs> people think I have a karate background, but no, it's because mm -hmm. I've watched a lot of George St. Pierre and Leo Kuchita. So I learned from them and then I apply it to my own. With that said, I've learned a lot from watching online. Like, you know, you get better at the gym, but I also learned a lot online. So I see all these fighters and then uh, I try them out in sparring and, you know, I take what works and I throw out what doesn't. And then that's what gave me the idea. Like, if I can do that. You know, other people can also learn from these videos. So then I started looking and picking apart different UFC fighters. Uh, most likely the ones that are, you know, they have something different, like a signature move. Yeah, and exactly. then I'll try it in my sparring. And then whether I land them or not, I still add them to my videos because people want to see how it how it is when you fail, not just the successful attempts, or they can just watch the UFC fight where they land, yeah. right? Um, it's a very one, scientific method, yeah. Yeah, that's like one way I make content. And to be honest, another that's way. also really, a, a, <coughs> I can really see that martial artist uh, mindset. You know, you're a very, uh, very humble guy. You, you know, Thank you, you. You, you show yourself, you know, in the videos also failing to uh, perform certain techniques, just you, so you can show, you know, that you're also human. That's, a, that's yeah. the thing I really admire about you, my man. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's impossible to land every strike. It's impossible to get into a fight or a sparring match and never get hit. You, you'll always get hit. You yeah. know, it's impossible. Um, but as I was mentioning, I, I film all my sparring sessions because that's become a new way for me to break down and make content because I spar and I just do things naturally and then – one of my favorite things to do after sparring is I go home and I watch my footage and I watch what I do. And sometimes I kind of just go with the flow, right? You know, there's times where I go into the sparring session with the plan and I'm trying to do certain moves. And then sometimes I'm just flowing and not thinking and just, you know, switching stances, doing fun stuff. Yeah. And then I watch my movements and I learn from myself and then I'll teach it, teach it then. Because I, 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 I preach, teaching only what I've pulled off or can actually do in a, in a real scenario. Oh, that's nice. That's a nice mentality. That's a good methodology right there. I really like that a lot. Like, um, that kind of reminds me of Dwayne Ludwig. He does a lot of, like, um, you know, like he watches a lot of footage and then he tries to break it down and break it down and break it down to the point where he's got the 
particular science to it. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like you have it more down to uh, there's a the science and then there's the art. Mm -hmm. So it's also yeah. like you're trying to get more of the expression versus the example, mm -hmm. which is really delightful, really awesome. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I mean, Ludwig's, uh, he's a legend. Uh, you know, I'm far from getting to his status, but uh, for me personally, I don't, I don't think of myself as the best out there. I don't think I'm, you know, even capable of being the best, but I just want to be a martial artist and I just want to constantly learn. And, uh, yeah, so you want to be the best that you can be. Exactly, yeah. I mean, in my opinion, if you're doing better than you were yesterday, then you're the best you at this moment, absolutely. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Absolutely. I mean, we can't compare ourselves Marshall. to John Jones. That'd be unfair. He's too tall. He's too, too many eye pokes. <laughs> too, yeah. too athletic. Yeah. The genetics. That's, that is something that uh, is a real big thing in fighting, though. Athleticism, but also, you know, height, weight, uh, reach. What body type, oh, yeah. you know, do you have the most problems with in sparring or fighting? Tall people. For sure. Tall, lanky people. <laughs> I remember like back in the day, I had an amateur fight at uh, 140, 140 pounds. I'm 5'8", and I fought a guy that was 6'3", at 140 pounds. He was just, you know, tall, very skinny, and uh, all, all I could literally do is land low kicks. You know, I won oh, the fight with just low kicks, but, you know, it was I have the same problem, my man, <laughs> in the year yeah. in the Netherlands. I'm, so, I'm like, well, I'm like 5'9", but, you know, mm -hmm. all, all the people in the Netherlands are like 6'2", so or tall. above that, so <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah. So but that amateur you, uh, fight, you're basically fighting Slenderman, huh? Yeah. <laughs> how did you yeah. Start that must be at, horrifying. But how did you, <laughs> did you start in... Uh, in martial arts, if I may ask. I, I, I started with Muay Thai. And um, actually, it's funny because you, uh, you asked that, Renz, is because I struggled sparring tall, lanky guys, in Muay Thai, you face those guys. Like, if I'm fighting at 135, I'm fighting guys that are, like, sometimes six feet, minimum mm -hmm. five nine, five ten, which makes it very difficult just striking with them. But in MMA, if you're fighting a tall, lanky guy, you know, they're not as strong as the shorter compact guy. And uh, that's where my double leg blasts come in handy and the jujitsu. And it just becomes more of a strategic uh, sport than just you trying to strike. You have a very good double leg, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. It's, um, it's, it's almost George St. Pierre like uh, in terms of timing. Yeah. I, I, I don't have a wrestling background. I'm not actually a great wrestler. Like, if you put me against a nether wrestler who's just, you know, in straight wrestling, I get stuffed at every time. Like if I, I go for the shot, he stuffs me down. The only reason I'm able to land double legs and sparring and whatever it is, is because I, sh I time it off the punch. Mm. But in pure wrestling, I'm not that great. But that's why I do MMA and not wrestling. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you have a brown not. belt in jujitsu though, right? Yes. Yes. I was promoted to brown belt. I believe uh, was the last year. Yeah. Some, some time flies, yeah. right? Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. Man, still. Thank you. Thank you. Rens, you also had a question about jiu-jitsu, right? Um, well, I got to ask because a lot of people have been getting into trends. Like, uh, I guess the best example for striking would be like you saw a whole year where people were throwing like the spinning uh, wheel kick. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to be the next trend for jiu-jitsu? Because I think we're still in a like leg lock renaissance. Mm -hmm. And I honestly feel like there's going to be a time where someone sees a new technique and it's like, oh my God, that is it. <laughs> um, yeah, definitely right now is a uh, leg lock uh, generation or trend, what do you, whatever you want to call it. Team leg lock, um, Vince. Team leg lock. Um, Team leg lock. <laughs> <laughs> For me personally, I'm not too big in leg locks. I'm just trying to defend it. Um, when it comes to jiu-jitsu as well, I used to be uh, really into sport jiu-jitsu, but now that I'm in MMA, my jiu-jitsu has now become like, if I'm on bottom guard, I'm not even looking for submissions. I'm just trying to stand back up. So I'm looking for like five, five, six different go-to methods to stand back up. I get taken down. I don't you know, look for submissions. I just try to pop up to my feet. Always, always just trying to post, technical stand, try to stand back up. Um, and I think that's actually very popular right now in, in UFC MMA. as well. In, in MMA and the high level guys, you see them get to the ground and bam, they pop back up right away. Like Jiu you watch Jitsu like breakfast, my man. Look yeah. for that scramble. It's, it's so yeah. hard to land uh, submissions and takedowns off your back against left, you know, a, 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 against guys who are at that level. In my exactly. Opinion. It's like if you watch, uh, for example, Max Holloway versus Brian Ortega, you know, Brian takes him down once or twice and just pops right back up. Yeah. Or Jose Aldo, he gets oh, taken man. down. Right on. It's, you know, it's so, crazy. It's crazy. 
But you know that yeah. that's in the U, in my opinion the UFC you know the top five of the US, of the UFC that those are the best fighter in their respected weight class. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You know, but I also saw you uh, talking about jiu jitsu. I also mm-hmm. love the videos that you did with Faraz Sahabi. How was? Uh, Faraz is uh, on another level. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he really he really is. How was uh, rolling with him? Because oh, yeah. also, nice. how was? Uh, what did you think was the most difficult part of rolling with him? Oh, what was the most difficult? Um, I mean, he's just always a step above me. He's uh, not only is he heavier, stronger, but he's also very fast, and uh, he's just very smooth with his transition. He just knows what to do um, at every second moment, and and yeah. Did you also get a chance to uh, spar with uh, George Saint Pierre? I did not, unfortunately. George oh. Saint Pierre, from my understanding, kind of just does his own thing. <laughs> when I when I honestly when I went to the gym, he's just kind of in his own corner doing backflips. <laughs> he's retired, living his life, you know. You know that, that's like intimid- a, like that, a that's mat. intimidating. See, seeing such a big guy, such a you know, such a great fighter, just casually doing backflips. Yeah, walk into Trisar Gym. It's like, hey, for us, when do we get the gymnastics department? No, no, it's just GSP. Don't worry about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Just, yeah. What do you think exactly. uh, is so good about the way Fira Sahabi, you know, uh, teaches things? Because he's, you know, he's known as one of the best, if not the best, MMA coach on the planet. So, so what are your thoughts things, on that? Two of the things that I've noticed about Faraz um, is I like the way he programs his, uh, his training regime. Some guys at the gym, they push you to like max, like, you know, when you're tired, gassed out, ready to give up, ready to drop, you'll push, they'll push you even more to the point where you don't want to show up to train anymore. I actually have a former coach who pushed me to that point where I was actually scared to go into training, like back in the amateur days. But with Faraz, he believes in the, uh, I, I think it's called the 80% rule or whatever. Something whereas, like that. Yes. I know what you're you don't about. train to you hit your limit. You train till 80% and you train every day and so that the next day you're happy, ready, motivated to train. And yeah. um, for my last fight camp, I felt that way. I was ready and motivated to go in every day. I wasn't feeling like absolute garbage, like just torn up, right? Uh, because he didn't push me to that 110% limit. It's about consistency and not uh, not overtraining. Exactly. and that Absolutely. Also- it also ties in with the mindset of being a martial artist. Like I'm not, I don't think of myself as a fighter. I just want to train every day and keep getting better versus, you know, killing myself for this fight. Yeah. You know, I'm looking for the longevity of the sport. Oh, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's actually a good way to keep yourself going much longer because I've seen a lot of people who train like, you know, they just grind away at it. And mm-hmm. by the time they're 35, they have like all sorts of issues. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Cain Velasquez, for example. Oh, it's just a mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't, you know, I don't know how long I plan on fighting for, but I want to train until I die, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Don't we all though? Yeah, true. <laughs> I want you to know, be a red should... belt in jujitsu by the time I'm at least eighty. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> you know, but the thing also is when you train like that, your recovery time, most of the time, is also way shorter. So. You know, you can train more, so, so sometimes you're better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Recovery it's, is also Do you also do important. a lot of body weight exercises? Because Firas also emphasizes th- those uh, a lot. I do. I did a lot of, I only did body weight during the quarantine. But uh, when I am, you know, when I have access to the weights, I actually like to do the uh, 20 by 1 regime. So mm-hmm. I'll do as many exercises as I can for 20 reps, but one set each only. Um, with the 20 rep being a struggle and that way I can hit as much muscles as I can in the whole body, kind of really balance the full body versus focusing on just chest or legs or whatever. So not too heavy weights. Yeah. I feel like endurance and, uh, you know, explosive movements is better for MMA and, and the most important thing is just hitting every body, not unbalancing the body. All right. I guess that makes sense. Why do you like fighting, by the way? Because you seem like a very humble guy, a you know, question. a very nice guy. So we want to know how. Uh, why do you like hitting people? <laughs> I don't. I don't like fighting. Actually, I hate fighting. I think it's very stressful. I think. Um, I think. The, you, oh, sorry, what was that? You, oh, not problem. You can't strike me as kind of like. Um, there's this um, martial art phrase like it's better to be a warrior that is capable of being in a gardener versus a gardener in the side of a war. 
true. That's how you kind of strike me. Yeah, uh, I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, I actually problem. never never thought of that, but for me, um, in my perspective, I it, it goes back to what I already mentioned is that I see myself more as a martial artist. I love it as a sport. I like to point spar. I like to point fight. I don't have knockout power. I've never knocked anyone out, to be honest. Um, you know, yet. I, I, you haven't done it yes, yet. Indeed. Yet, yet, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but you know, I'm I'm more of a point fighter. Um, I like to, not not that I'm a karate point fighter, but I like to I like to hit, but not do a lot of damage. Hit, 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 and I like to play around. More like and a vol- the, volume uh, fighter. Volume fighter, like Max yeah. Holloway. Um, yeah. Now I find in a fight, it's always different from sparring. Like I feel like when I'm sparring, I feel like Superman, but in a fight, it's just the pace is different. You're you automatically want to hit harder, and I don't play my game as well in an actual fight than I do sparring, and that's been a challenge and a goal of mine to try to get to that stage where mm-hmm. you know I can get into a fight and just fight like Mac Howard. Just pop, 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 tap, 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 yeah. volume, volume, not go for the knock go. But in my fights, I automatically just instinctually, you know, it's funny because I say instinctually, but like yeah, I, I go for the knockout, but I, I never get the knockout. But when I play it, you know, loose, pop, 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 that's when I do the best. And uh, you know, my next fight, that's when I'm hoping If you have experience, experienced the uh, flow state in a fight, you know, because we m- most certainly all ha- had that in, you know, in uh, training and sparring. Uh, yeah, actually, that's what I'm speaking of. I, I don't think I've hit that in a fight yet. I definitely get that all the time in sparring, and I love it, and that's why I, you know, fell in love with the sport and martial yeah. arts in general. But that's why I hate fighting, because I, I don't ever feel that way in a fight. And that's why I don't even fight that often. But obviously, when, uh, you know, I actually told my audience that I was not going to fight ever again, that I've retired and I'm just going to be a martial artist and vlog my training. And that's what makes me happy. But then when, when champion uh, knocks on your door, you kind of can't say no to it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, yeah. I get that. I think everybody would say yes to that. Yeah. How, how is it fighting I for would. one championship? Very, very organized. Very, uh, very ran very smoothly. Uh, I'm very happy that I'm with them. That's nice because to me, it's definitely a good promotion. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good promotion. They treat the fighters very well. I also like uh, the their mindset. They don't uh, they don't uh, preach like trash talking like UFC. I'm not yeah. a big trash talker. I, I probably couldn't trash talk if I had to save myself. <laughs> it, it would be funny to see you try trash talk trash talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I Jeff, if you really want to, you can actually give it a try on me. We just kind of do what <laughs> just we can do the playground like back and forth if you want to. How do you personally personally uh, deal with trash talking though? Have you ever experienced it or? Um, not. Ne- I've, I, I, yeah, I obviously receive hate on YouTube here yeah. and there. Um, ah, screw it, those trolls. They, yeah, exactly. The exactly. It doesn't matter who you are, how good you are, uh, whatever it is. There's always going to be haters, and those haters. Absolutely. Are, yeah, I truly totally. believe they're people that are just not happy with themselves. Like they're in a very dark place in life and. So that's the only hate and trash talking I've ever ever had. And to be honest, yeah. martial arts can help with that so much. Even yeah. with bullying, if you know, if you take a bullying victim and you take the bully, they can become best friends. You know, when they join a, uh, a jiu-jitsu uh, school. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I feel like a lot of people join a gym with a big ego, and then they, they come out a total different person. Yeah, humbling experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I get what you're saying, indeed. But I also think that you know, when when uh, you take martial arts, you know, and you take them to the level that you're at, it takes a lot of work, you know. And and along the way, you always will meet people that can, you know, beat you whenever they want to. And that's mm-hmm. also, in my mind, a very humbling experience. But also, it it makes you maybe you can say if it's true or not. But maybe it's also. Uh, you know, you know, eagers you to become better as a martial artist. For sure, for sure. Um, there's too many people that are better than me and can, <laughs> can whip my ass, you know. Uh, it just makes me want to keep getting better. Yeah. That's for a sure. good mindset to go with. Yeah. Absolutely. But quick question. What, um, I was looking on to one of the websites that you train for. You are an instructor at it's Barhaven, correct? Yeah, Barhaven uh, Martial Arts Center. Like, out of curiosity, um, you've trained, like, I imagine you have some cross-training with Krav Maga there? 
Uh, yes, uh, the gym I used to train at was called the Ottawa Academy of Martial Arts. Um, gotcha. Obviously, gym politics and whatnot, the, the, the gym owners kind of split up. But um, oh. yeah, I, I did train Krav Maga for about a year, um, about once or twice a, a, a week in Krav Maga. It's a very cool self-defense, um, but obviously uh, none of the gyms that I train at currently uh, teach it. So. All right. Is there any art that you want to uh, still want to learn? Yeah, actually, I have two big, you know, dreams, goals of mine. One is to travel the world and train at as many gyms as I can, which I'm currently somewhat doing right now. Uh, the other That's one nice is, one. yeah, it's nice a real cool, cool vlog idea. And the other is to start traveling to different countries and gyms and learn different disciplines. Um, the next thing that I have in mind is to go learn uh, knife attacks and knife. Oh, like Filipino martial arts. Yeah, or whatever it is, whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. You know, here uh, at my MMA gym, they also teach uh, escrima, and that's also with knives okay. and sticks. So it's also that's a good one to learn. So my yeah, actually tell you what, man. Oh, sorry, Rance. Go ahead. Oh, no problem. I tell you what, best way to learn about um, defending against knife attacks. <laughs> Just, you know, going to the kitchen at a restaurant, <laughs> trust me, you'll find yourself at the edge of a blade at one point or another. Yeah. It is <laughs> incredibly not rare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Rance was a cook, so. Yeah, oh, no, I'm saying from funny? experience, uh, uh -huh. I used to be a cook, yeah. Like, okay. um, it's funny, you'd be surprised how many cooks have a short temper, and when you do mm. martial arts, it really kind of puts your flair from here to like a little slow burn. Interesting. But apparently some other chefs, they're like, I've had it happen to me once where a chef mm -hmm. was waving around a knife upset. And I was like, we can talk, but let's put down the fucking knife, please. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. I don't want to, I don't want to call HR about a slice on my wrist or something. <laughs> I've worked at a server before where I had a Vietnamese restaurant where I had to like go to the back and, uh, you know, grab the food and you're right there. They can be very angry people. I think it's the steam. The oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the closed environment and the yeah. egos. Like, they said my dish is wrong. Let me try this. <laughs> this dish is perfect. Send it back. <laughs> sure. Tell Gordon Ramsay he's a schmuck. We're talking about, Gordon, talking about listening, martial I'm sorry. arts. Uh, is there some martial arts that you think, you know, are uh, kind of bullshit? Are kind of too... Or kind of. Vincent, watch your fucking language, man. <laughs> yeah, I know we have the, we had one of the nicest guys on YouTube on. But <laughs> um, so you're asking, do I think there are any martial arts that are bullshito? Yeah, I'll bullshit. Um, bullshit when I when I first started martial arts, actually, uh, in my first martial art with Muay Thai, I used to be very close minded, and I used to think that like Muay Thai was the best, and only Jiu Jitsu, Karate sucks, Taekwondo sucks, Wing Chun, all that sucks. I used to think that, but as I become more of an experienced martial artist. I, I realized that all martial arts, I believe all martial arts are effective. It just really depends on who's the one uh, doing it. Yeah, maybe also on the training methods. Yeah. I hate to ruin dreams, but I got a few martial arts I can tell you about that might shatter your belief on <laughs> all of them have a valid thing. Have you heard of yellow bamboo? No. <laughs> Oh my god, you have to... No. Seriously, do yourself a favor, hop on um, YouTube sometime. Okay. Yellow Bamboo Martial Arts. It is... It is priceless. I I'll switch it up just for the la laughs and giggles. What do you uh, think, pers personally, you know, when, because we also had uh, a guy la named Sensor Set, I don't know if you know him. He also has mm -hmm. a YouTube channel with, I believe, okay. 11,000 subscribers now but he, he you know he started he is a karate black belt but he also trains in the same style that wonder boy does he also sparked oh, with nice. wonder boy okay now in campo <laughs> indeed that's Sweet. the one but you know he also receives uh, you know hate comments because some people really think karate is just you know doesn't work but he he has a style and he has a way of training that it does mm -hmm. work mm -hmm. Yeah, it depends, right? You can't say karate doesn't work because George St. Pierre and Lido Michida yeah, exactly. use it. Wonder Boy as well. Oh, and Wonder Boy, too. Shout out! Yeah, He's the totally best karate proud. fighter in MMA at this moment, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah, I love him. He's great. What, what are your thoughts on something like uh, Aikido? Um, I've seen it. I've, I've uh, seen it on TV. I've never, ever sparred or moved with anyone. Um, I believe it can work if the opponent is very aggressive and is just like moving forward at you. Also, doesn't really 
know much martial arts, I guess. That's my yeah. guess. I, I could be wrong. Um, don't worry. It's I, not a loaded question. We promise. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't see someone really throwing me, like, like me personally, just because I, I feel like I understand uh, how to stop my <laughs> – you know, rushing forward. You yeah. know what oh, I mean? absolutely. You, know, I you have like, a composure about you. You have composure yeah. about you for yeah. sure. Yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I think it can be effective against someone who's untrained, but at the current moment, no one has shown that it would work against a, a trained fighter. Yeah. But you know, the thing with wrist locks like that, you know, I always believe that they can work, but only if you already know how to wrestle or how to, you know, or, yeah. you know, your jiu-jitsu because on the ground, wrist yeah. locks can work. But that's oh, only wrist. because you have control of the whole body. I was going to say wrist locks, wrist locks definitely do work. I was submitted by a wrist lock just like last week <laughs> against my yeah. coach. You know, I didn't that, know we were playing with, prison rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's the thing with most, in my opinion, of course, the, the thing with most uh, arts like that. It's like they can work, but only if you, all, if you already know your kickboxing, your Muay Thai, your boxing, yeah. your wrestling. Exactly. That's th- that's He's a black belt in jiu-jitsu too, so. Oh, what absolutely. Did you say? Sorry, can you say it again? I was going to say my coach, who's a black belt in jiu-jitsu, <clears throat> is, uh, he's like 200 pounds at least, and he <laughs> couldn't move. <laughs> yeah. Weight way is a factor in a fight. It's a big factor. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. I mean, especially if he's a black belt, man. Like, if he's a black belt, that's amazing. That's a good mm-hmm. That's a good amount of detail to have. But if you also mm-hmm. have the leverage on top of extra weight on that leverage, it yeah. might be hard to use that technique on him. Exactly. exactly. It's like he knows the game already. So he's like, oh, yeah, I know this escape. I'm just going to add a little extra on that hip and okay. boom, pressure. Yeah. Would so then, rather, go, oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say, going back to the Aikido question, my, I would be curious, and I'm not doubting any Aikido practitioners out there, but I would be curious if a smaller Aikido practitioner could, for example, throw my coach, who's huge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But also because they really, you know, emphasizes on self-defense, you know, not on sport. Mm-hmm. So in yeah. my eyes, you know, self-defense should be, you know, mostly smaller people against bigger people because those mm-hmm. are the ones that are most likely to attack you. Yeah. If they or if they have a weapon, one or two. Exactly. Is that also a reason why you want to go more into wep you know, weapon martial arts or is it just for the fun? Um I just think it's uh I think it's not just weapons that I want to learn. I just want to learn different martial arts and I just want to be a more open-minded martial artist and kind of experience everything. Just like right now, I'm being exposed to different gyms, different training resumes, different tra- training partners. I also want to be exposed to different martial arts and just kind of add and learn as much as I can. And Amazing. different podcasts. You're also being exposed to different podcasts. Chat combat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> What's that, Chat combat you say? <laughs> But, you know, Rens also wanted to ask you some quick questions. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So um, I have to ask because your nickname is Jeff Jackie Chan. Mm-hmm. How would you fare against movie star Jackie Chan in an MMA ring or cage? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think Jackie Chan does MMA. I think, his, I think what he does is um, more for acting. Um, it's hard to say. It's hard to say. I think, think you do pretty well. I, I think Donnie Yen would do better. <laughs> Donnie Yen I think actually, that'd be a much more interesting <laughs> matchup. Yeah. yeah. Actually, Donnie Yen's like a pro belt from, you know, the last time I checked, he was like a pro belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Yeah, he's hey, a real he mixed martial artist. Yeah. Yeah, actually, for the Ip Man films, you know, the, the, he, in which he uses Wing Chun, he had to learn Wing Chun because his background was just, you know, MMA. Uh, oh, so he learned Wing Chun after anime. Yeah, he did. Very interesting. I mean, have you ever seen the movie uh, Flashpoint by chance with Donnie? I have. I have. That I have. movie was great. It was great. It was a lot of I love anime that one. techniques. Yeah, yeah. You know, but all, with really always, I love, you know, movies where they have realistic fighting, but it's fun <laughs> because in movies they can always take way more damage than, you know, a normal human can. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. But you know, you that's why we watch it. movies because it's fun. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 100 yeah. percent. Unless they're scary movies, in which case it's because we want to be taken out of the element of, oh man, it's really bad outside, riots, everything. Let's put on purge. <laughs> purge. 
No, I'm scared. I've never seen that movie. Oh no, <laughs> Moral Halloween. No. Oh yeah. <laughs> I got a feeling I know how it ends. I watched the more science fiction stuff myself mm-hmm. and combat <laughs> movies. Yuri Boyka. Good stuff. Um, I don't think I've watched Oh, on this. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, on this period, yeah. The undisputed yeah. movies yeah. are great, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. I'll show everyone that I am the best fighter in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever tried I don't do that with, uh, very well. With, mo- with movie actors like Scott Atkins, for example, or Michael J. Mm-hmm. White? I, what was your question? What was my favorite? Have you actors? ever uh, trained with them? Oh, trained. Um, no, I have not, unfortunately. Have you ever? Yet. Had, yeah. Then a hopefully. follow-up question That'd for that: cool. Do you ever want to be in a movie? You know, have you ever? Do, do you ever want to uh, try to have an acting career? Career. I'd love to, but I think I would do poorly because I'm not a very great actor. I could probably be like a stuntman, but but I'm not a good actor. All right. Unfortunately. Just gonna throw it out there to you, buddy. Stunt actors have way more fun than the actual actors. Yeah. Because consider yeah. this, man. Have you ever seen movies where an actor plays a chef or a waiter? <laughs> All their research is being a chef or a waiter, but stunt people, it's like, hey, this is your stunt. You have to jump out a window onto this crash mat. It's like, oh, I love my job. This is the fun <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, no, I, I would love to uh, if the opportunity ever came. How much uh, time do you have left, uh, my man? Um, I got till 42-ish, and then I got to get ready to go train. All right. That's, uh, that's like cool. five minutes, right? Yes. All I right. think we have time for the speed round. You ready, yeah. Vincent? Okay. Very <laughs> Let's nice. Let's go, Rance. The speed round. We, uh, we, do, cool. this, we do this uh, with everyone that's on. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So first question is a this or that. Who would you rather fight? Seagull or Jean Claude Van Damme? Seagull. <laughs> Everyone says Seagull. Yeah, everyone says <laughs> Seagull. <laughs> <laughs> Your turn, Vincent. Uh, who would you rather fight, Khabib or Francis Ngannou? Oh, Khabib. he gets this one every Khabib, time. Khabib, Khabib, Khabib. Oh, you you chosen the slow death, the ground slow death. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, that's a hard one. <laughs> um, Cobra Kai or Miyagi? I don't know. Miyagi-Do, I should say. Uh, oh, Karate Kid, like um, Cobra Kai Jim or it, it, Miyagi-Do Jim? I'm not too familiar with both. No mercy in this dojo. Have you ever, have you ever seen the Karate Kid movies, the original ones? Uh, I watched the jet one with Jackie Chan only. Oh, that's also oh, a movie, no problem. With uh, Will Smith's um, son? I don't know what dojos those are. Uh, well, they're the karate dojos with Will Smith's son. Oh, no, no, I've seen that. Um, tell you what, I have an even better question. <laughs> Ice cream, chocolate or vanilla? Vanilla. Good call. Would you, would you rather give up your Instagram account or your YouTube account? Instagram. That's a horrible. Instagram. <laughs> I get that. YouTube is kind of like your job or, not, or am I? Yeah, YouTube's my baby, and that's what I started with, so... So, movie preference, action or sci-fi? Action, definitely. Good call. Yeah. Nice. Then I think we need to wrap it up, Brent. All right. Cool beans, man. My man, Jeff. Uh, Jeff, re- really, uh, we really appreciated that you were on here. We're glad that you want to come back one day. We uh, look forward you. to seeing you perform again very soon. Thank you for when having me. When is your next fight? Um, I mean, I heard their first uh, event back is July 31st. Um, hopefully, I'll get a call after that. But uh, right now, I don't know. We're just uh, kind of waiting. for the best, my man. Absolutely. Yeah. Looking forward to, to seeing you back again. in the ring, man. Thank you, guys. And uh, the best, have a chat again. Have a good one, guys. You Later, too, my man. Later. Okay, bye.